now we move into my worst line and my biggest learning. Uh, first up, I'm going to call upon Apurva Shroff from Lit Design, Rohit Boite from Rohit Boite Designs, Jannat Vasi from Jannat Vasi Interior Design, and Pearl Mystery from the Della Group. Okay, so today's topic, uh, my worst client and my biggest learning, I think uh, what I wanted to start with is go person-wise and I really encourage you to be as uh, candid as possible. I'm not telling you to give a name, age, date, project information, but please be very candid as to what exactly, what was your like absolute worst experience Pearl dealing with a client? Um, hi, good afternoon, good evening everybody. Um, Sarah, just to immediately start off Della Group and the interior vertical that we have has always taken on turnkey projects. So we've always done end-to-end -end turnkey supplies and solutions. And um, there was a very tempting project that came our way for a client that recently rented a very fancy apartment in Breach Candy. And I saw the place and it looked beautiful and um, it was something out of our area where he said, just spruce it up, right? So I went from a turnkey project pitch into, you know, doing up one room, doing the living room. Okay, the main chandelier, um, maybe, you know, you could add your elements to it. Uh, that was a big mistake getting out and agreeing and trying to really kind of make that project happen. Uh, we went ahead with it. Everything was done as per the quotation. But what happened is I started realizing halfway into the project that everything was becoming a little manipulative. Can you also do this for the temple? I know this wasn't there, but my wife loves this. The emotional factor comes in. And as our, our previous speaker said, that you also as designers get very emotionally involved, especially when you're doing a residence with a big family. You're in their spaces, you've understood each other, they've understood you, their candid conversations that you haven't shared. Um, so I think understanding very fast that how do I start learning to navigate it? And that's when they saw a very different side of me where there was one sweet understanding pearl that was you know, going ahead with it, who came with all this passion and enthusiasm while doing the house. And a second side which said that I'm also a businesswoman. I might be young, but I'm not going to be taken for granted. There are processes in place. This is the contract, this is the quotation. And it was also new for me because every client that we dealt with, this was understood. It was understood I was gonna give you a chandelier. It was understood I'm gonna do your soft furnishings, your linen, your curtains. Um, so, you know, really putting your foot down, learning to navigate it and learning how to kind of maneuver from this kind of a personality that comes in. So, you know, not losing who you are, but also being very firm and again, being ready at any point in time to walk out, right? I did not want to be um, so early on in my career to even have a project that I leave incomplete. So that constant conflicting interest and, you know, just dealing and working and finding a way, you know, to move forward from it. Coming down to understanding that we both have a common goal and objective and if things are going to be done as per process and as per a very agreeable sense, why not? Let's make it happen. Okay, awesome. That, that sounds really good. Um, I just wanted to ask uh, more specifically, what happened that made it the worst experience apart from, so he, he kept asking for more and more things that were out of your scope and you felt really awkward and you didn't know what to do in that situation? Um, things where he got very furious one day. So for instance, we had this uh, beautiful, um, I wouldn't say like a balcony, but kind of like a mid-landing area, which was a bit of an indoor-outdoor space. Getting into all the railings of that area and all the glass facade and all the pigeons are a nuisance. So a pigeon net for that kind of an amount, which was a little, it's got nothing to do with beautification. I still understand if the lights in the outdoor space are not appealing. One or two spotlights here and there, I can still tolerate and do it, keeping in mind. But um, I think that was a tipping point where he turned around and said, how can you not? It's a part of beautification. It's a part of a basic essence of what is required, which is where I had to put my foot down and say, sorry, now we need to go back to the contract because there are multiple such things that I've just done out of pure goodwill. Why don't we sit, let's make a fresh quotation and I'm happy to take on every other additional task with the additional cost that it comes with. I think that's amazing. I mean, that's exactly what I was hoping to, to get as an answer is to like, you suddenly switched gears even after he had fully pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and you're way over the line and you were still, even when it's like super late and you, you feel like, okay, but I've already done so much now, I'll just do this more, I'll just do this more. We've all been in that position. Uh, I think that's a good learning, even for me, that at any point, you can snap your fingers and say no. 
it stops here. I draw the line. Let's go back to the contract. And I think as Pearl is saying, she also had a personal relationship with the client, which makes it so messy because it becomes like auntie, uncle, uh, you know, Diwali, Christmas. Eid, how is your daughter, how is your dog, how is your husband, I hope your parents are doing fine, you know what I mean? So I think I, I think that's amazing and good for you, that's awesome. Apurva? Uh, hi, so, uh, so we got uh, hired to do this job and it was an office, it was 10,000 square feet, it was um, super high-end budget, really lovely people and I was so excited, okay? And everything went off really well in the beginning and um, they'd seen something I had done, they liked it and I became the flavor of the month. So, um, so, so everything went off fine in the beginning and then came uh, the finishing stages, right? The finishing stages and they said, you know what, uh, it's lacking a little bit of color. So I said, um, yeah, okay, you know, you try to please the client a little bit, you add a little bit of color. But you see my work, it's all, um, it's never OTT on color. It's always the neutrals, grays, beiges, all of them, right? So you add a little bit of color, then, then you add some more, but it was never enough. And then you try and work around the earthy tones, whatever you can do to save it at that time, right? So like Carl said, you never say no. You, <laughs> you keep trying and you keep trying. And then it just went down a slippery slope. So, yeah, the client is really happy, but uh, <laughs> that doesn't mean a happy architect, you know. So, if I go in there today, I have to wear shades or I would rather bag my head so I'm not recognized as the architect. <laughs> so, so, it was so traumatizing because it's not your style and your vibe at all, right? right. And you, so, just let it get, you just kept letting it go. So, I'll address the second part because I think that's your next question, what's the learning, right? So. Do I do that in the next round? Yeah, yeah, go for it since, you know. Okay. So, I would say no matter how big a project, my learning was whenever I meet a client, I sit them down and the first thing I do is say, have you seen my work? And uh, even if they say yes, I take them through images. I say, what do you like? Be specific. Because, you know, if there is a match, if they like your aesthetics, you can make everything work. But, but it's very hard to spend six months, eight months doing something and at the end of the day be embarrassed about it. You know, it's such a waste of time and I think that's not worth it. Amazing. I think, I think that's super. So I think for me, um, anytime someone approaches me saying like I, I have unlimited budget, whatever, whatever, just little bit classical and I'm like no 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 like there's a ton of designers that do a really good job with that and I understand because I feel like I see so many designers like a Pinakin for example and I've heard like legendary stories of him where he would just walk out of projects or be really strict with clients that didn't get his aesthetic you know and I've never been that assertive as a person I'm quite a pushover many times so I always wondered how you draw that line between um, you having your aesthetic and at the same time pleasing a client, I think going back to what Carla said, because the client is always right, but then I also want to be right, like it's my project, it's my aesthetic, it's my name on the project, it's my portfolio. So is that's the solution that you found for it? No, then? so honestly it always works. If you walk them through in the beginning, and you know, I also do the Pinterest images as the first round with them to understand what they like in that image, right? Because they could be liking something completely different and I could be seeing something completely different. So it's very important to go through like 20, 30, 50 images, maybe on Pinterest, from Instagram, whatever. But understand what the client has liked in that particular image. Is it the white molding he's liking or is the neon green color in the background, right? So that's, that's really important. Uh, guys, for those of you that are like super cramped, why don't we just have some people, if you're comfortable, literally just come and sit here so that you can sit and enjoy the session um, so that we can just have, have a few more people that get accommodated, yeah. Please feel free, just come, come through, come sit. <laughs> Carl is charging 5,000 rupees yeah, yeah. per chair, that's empty. <laughs> Yeah, yes, just welcome. come sit guys, I don't want you guys to be standing, It's there's lots of good good talks happening. Awesome. 
make yourselves comfortable. And I guess my only request would be when someone wants to walk through, just let them buy, please. Okay, Boite. So, so uh, as as a confession, uh, I've had many conversations with Boite about how to structure my business, how to charge fees. Most of my client problems have been directed at him uh, over many a drink. So, um, Boite, what has been your worst client experience? I've only been able to answer her question because I've had all the worst experience ever. Uh, let's say I've had all the immature uh, or a growing uh, designer phone problems. Uh, so the first one we ever had, like as a young, as a young studio, you always dream that I need that one project, like one project, big budget. Like he leaks, let's me buy this Italian brand. He wants me to do everything. So you're dreaming of that one project. One fine day, knocking the house, and this client refers that it's a huge project. I walk into the project, and there's a big uh, person, very well known in the industry. Like wow, what? Woohoo! God has been kind to you. So I go ahead and I sit for the meeting and he's like, oh, have you got your presentation? And I was pre-prepared, I knew the client, I'm like, if I go, I'm ready to go. Went in, gave him a presentation and he's like, wow, I like it. And the referral told me that would hide for him, he will negotiate. Okay, I quoted 2x, sat. He said, okay, really like your work, la 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 la, start work from tomorrow, we start meeting. So this high profile client with a very high budget sits with me, he's like, uh, this is my bedroom, what do we do? So I think an hour we sat, he's showing me pictures, 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 it took me an hour to tell him that you're showing me a penthouse of 20,000 square foot in Dubai and you have a house, a penthouse of 5,000 square foot. That big fireplace is not going to come here. Okay? It took me an hour to explain him and then we're redesigning and after an hour, I designed it in a compact sense and given him an approval that this is what we're going to do. He's like, go ahead, go ahead, I like your design. I start working, my team is making the drawings. Next day, the contractors have their drawings and they're starting work and suddenly two days later, my contractor is like, Sir, I'm photo to photo. I'm like, wow, what happened to the discussion? The whole design changed. Uh, so he's like, okay. And I'm being as greedy as possible. I want this project over. This project chahiye, chahiye, chahiye. Ye kab pe project hai? Chahiye. One bedroom same, two bedroom same, third bedroom same. I'm like, you know what? Let me have a conversation with this guy because my energy is going to waste. I sit with him and I'm like, sir, you're paying me a lot of money. Okay. On a serious note, you're paying me a lot of money, and you're doing the work. Do you still want me on the project? Like, no, but you get the work done very nicely. I'm like, but I'm not the contractor. I'm like, no, but you will do the project. Your name will come. I'm like, but this is not my work. Then, then it's like, I told him, like, sir, let's do what? Let's part ways. Uh, because I will not be able to do this. Uh, because I don't feel uh, uh, motivated to this, do this project. So that was one of my uh, extreme cases. And the funny one is there, which is always there. Yeah, I think, the, and there's one more about non-payment, which I know, I know that one. Let's skip those Let's ones. Let's skip that <laughs> No, that's the best one, that's no, the juiciest the best, one. Okay, no, oh, okay, of course, I, so maybe this one I don't was know this the one. the most immature one, but I have a good list of what not to do. So this one, um, a friend of mine recommended me to this project. It bro, go for this one, this is really amazing. Uh, a nice penthouse at Malabar Hill, I go there. Uh, I sit. And the whole setting is like there is chai, biscuit, and the whole family is there. I'm like wow, he to interview like that. <laughs> Sat down. The, the first thing the auntie is like, "Beta, to kya karte ho?" <laughs> <laughs> is this a marriage proposal, boy? <laughs> I'm like, did, did, didn't you call me for the project? Ha, beta, ghar dekho. <laughs> then this girl is like, "Isko ghar dekha do." Takes me around the whole house, showing me this is the room, this is the room, this is. I'm looking at the house like, this the, looks already done two or three to, uh, years old. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Okay, work as an amateur uh, studio, you are only hungry of work. So I'm like, chal, good project is coming, do it. S listen to it. I sit down, then they're asking me question. Kita saal ho gaya beta kaam karke? Kita kama lete ho? Then after a point, I felt that there's something awkward happening. 
So I asked them that, uh, so is this the project we are going to do? <laughs> yeah, we are thinking of renovating this, but uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, if you like your work, and then we will think about it. Then the topic again changes. So, Papa, what are you doing? <laughs> What's happening? And I said, hey, listen, I have another client meeting. Uh, you have my numbers, you have my detail, get back to me. He's like, okay, beta, you can do it, you can send your quotation and your date of birth. Bhi dena. <laughs> <laughs> Call my friend, like, where did you send me? He's like, no, they really like your portfolio and they were looking for their daughter. Which also. portfolio? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, which what will did you send? So, so you know, I, I did like one Instagram series of like, you know, tell me your worst client experience. One out of three responses was something to do with marriage and marriage proposals. Like for a lot of the girls and the boys now, clearly both that like, I don't know why people are trying to hire interior designer plus husband or wife or I don't know. What would be the solution or your biggest solution. learning from that? First solution is next time you go for a meeting, ask them, the plan, the budget, and who's going to sit for the meeting. Yeah. If there is more than one, don't go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and from your previous experience, Boite, I mean, the uh, one so where the, you got... We made a whole checklist. We made a whole checklist that uh, what do we do is now we ask for a plan, uh, then we'll ask for the requirements. We have a questionnaire, we ask them, like, what is that you're looking at in the interiors yeah. in terms of uh, the requirements of the family, mm -hmm. one the design has to think as much as you can describe. No, I'm saying the previous project where you you were very enthusiastic to do Correct. it and so, so, oh, so that. Uh, so we ask them all the questions is, what is that you are looking for? Because of those, that question and it fits fit my bill. Like, is, Only I want to do it, then I will get on board. And then of course, uh, ask few people all around now. Like a referral is the best thing to yeah. ask that, how is this client? Because a big name was the worst people to work at times. I agree with this totally. So like I'm very clueless, like clients that I've been with for six, six months, I don't even know what they do because I feel like it's a very rude question to ask somewhere like, what's your business? What do you do? How do you earn your money? Like, I feel like it's a very weird question. It's not, yeah, <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's not my, my place to know what your business is. You are hiring me. I'm not hiring you. But I agree with him totally that like now, they do their checks on me, I do double checks on them. So like I call everyone I know saying, hey, this is this person, they are from this new city, this is the name, this is the number, this is the WhatsApp profile photo. Ask all my clients in that city, do you know this person? I will find at least two people that can cross check that this is a normal functioning human being that's not gonna like scam me and take my drawings or misbehave with me in some way, shape or form. So I guess that's a learning for you guys as well is like as much as people can check you, you check them back to make sure that they are also a right match for you. It's not just that you are the person getting interviewed. It has to be a two-way street, right? Okay, Janet, your worst ever experience. So, uh, hi everyone. It's lovely to see all of you here. Uh, so I, again, like all of us, have had a lot of bad experiences, especially in the early days when we were starting off and we had a clients who thought, I mean, tried to take advantage of us, etc, etc. But uh, one that really stays with me is we had a client which was uh, during lockdown. So I took this one project and maybe a lot of us have been there where during that time we had a lot of overheads and we had a team to support, etc. And we did say yes to a few projects which we shouldn't have. So honestly that happened. And I said yes to this one supplier who was making his home and uh, that I think was a very big mistake because I feel that we didn't, our wavelengths didn't match though he really liked our design style and he really wanted to work with us but uh, when, it come, when it came to respecting our time and especially say my time, my team's time, uh, there, was, there was no sync there. So I would say the experience was bad because every time we went to site and he expected us to come like like you mentioned, even when there was a door handle change, there were like the smallest of things where we didn't have to be involved. He wanted us to come like twice a week, three times a week. And for us as designers, our time is the most precious thing. Because we don't have a factory, we don't have manufacturing, we don't have production. Our time is our money. Uh, so that is something that I am extremely 
mindful about and he absolutely didn't respect it and what started happening is that uh, it was a big gated community in South Bombay so every time he went to site two hours would get wasted because since he was a supplier he said let me take you to this person's home let me take you to that person's home so we went to like 10 homes and he kept showing us okay this this designer has done this this architect has done this so at the end of the day what happened is then I remember I was actually on bandstand walking one of the evenings and I said that okay this is enough and you know that tipping point for me Sara is that when he called me on Eve to come to, to work. site to work in the morning and I think there was like there was Eid, there was a Republic Day, these kind of things where he's like, no, you have to come to site or then site will not work, etc, etc. And I said, okay, you know, and I was like trying to understand what's happening here and uh, trying to be patient with him just for the very reason that I was aware in my mind, at the back of my mind that I am going to walk from this project. If it, So I was just like seeing where this leads to. And this was the civil phase of the project. So it's not like I got into the carpentry, etc, etc. This was like the first two, three months. And uh, when he called me on like my Eid and he called me on these, you know, so for us it's very emotional and we have children. So for us, uh, and we both, like our kids are the same age. So we understand what it means to, you know, be present at work. If you have two hours, you dedicated three hours, dedicated four hours, be completely immersed in work with them. Don't do something else. But once you're done, you're done. And then don't take like our time for granted. So I was walking on bandstand and I gave him a call and I said that, uh, you know, I was just like, like, like broke up with him. And I actually told him, I said, see, I said, see, there are relations. And I actually told him, I said, see, there are relationships in life that don't work. The same way our relation of client design, it's not working. So there's no bad blood between you and me. I still think of you as a friend and I hope that you don't have any grudge against me. But it's, see, not you, it's, not, it's, it's not you, it's not me. It's not me, it's you, it's not you, yeah. it's me. So I told him that, see, we're friends. He's a supplier, you know, so I, I don't want to like, you know, uh, rub this the wrong way or anything. So I just told him it's just not working out. And uh, yeah. That was something that so was I think for terrible. You, you have to learn to draw boundaries or draw boundaries, and understand yeah. which has happened a lot since I would say the past two years. I've completely changed. So you know earlier how when we go to site or you go to a project and you give your literally your whole day yeah. and you're never seeing the time because it's literally your home. So you're so emotionally involved, like everyone was saying, that you don't realize when you need to balance your life. We're also designers, so you need to come back to the studio and design you need to spend time with your team for example so all these things need to be in their own space so i think you need to calendar your time really effectively so i think one thing that um, i have started doing because i had an issue with one of my clients where um, they wanted me to set up a call at 9 pm like multiple times because they had a child that was overseas and they wanted me to talk to that child about their room and um, i just kept saying no i'm sorry that time doesn't work for me i, I work like a dog through the week and in the nights and evenings is my time with my daughter and I got a bunch of messages saying um, you're so unprofessional you're in a service industry um, how dare you talk to me like this please make sure that you come and meet me before this project goes any further like he was really aggressive and really rude because I didn't want to take a late night phone call so my learning uh, specific to like I think if someone called me at Eid and asked me to work I would be extremely triggered so uh, the day I sign my clients and even before I send them a contract, I tell them very clearly I work Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's 6.05, there are many days I will not answer the call. Please don't take it personally, but I will make this clear to you. I do not work Saturday, I do not work Sunday. I understand you're a high-flying corporate person with your job, but I'm not going to compromise my personal life because of you. You will have to compromise your work life if you want to work with me. And if you're okay with that, we sign. I don't take any money until I get a, a clear approval from the other person saying, you will respect my personal space. Because otherwise I feel like many designers have an awful work-life balance because they never make that clear with their clients. They just like day, night, kabhi bhi, Sunday. So all Sundays, all designers seem to be added. Sundays, I think you should never say yes because then it becomes a habit. It's a habit. Once you say yes to them on Sunday and they all ask very politely, you know, yeah. that we are free, we're working, working through the week, we don't have time. Can you come on Sunday? Just morning, just half an hour. And then once you say yes to that, then you're stuck. 
Yeah. So, it, absolutely. Yeah, so like, I think yeah. um, to wrap this up, uh, I just wanted to get one point from each of you. If you were uh, to turn back time, what advice or what one or two systems would you put in place as a young design studio that would help you avoid a lot of the problems that you you obviously has we've all faced problems as we have grown. What is the one system or the one policy you wish from day one you had just done and avoided a lot of these client issues or these problems? Um, so Sara, Della Group is not a young design studio, so I've been fortunate that on the professional side of things, it's very structured, the blueprints are laid out, it's been a tried and tested formula with multiple terrible experiences that has derived this. Uh, but what I've learned is my personal checklist, the way I think you've said it, going so specifically into the working hours that you're comfortable communicating with, my personal checklist of who I am and who I'm going to bring on and into this project, uh, I think I wish I put earlier on. Um, the other thing that I've started doing now, and actually I feel um, I inherently started doing, um, I switch off from my, uh, you know, friendly personality. So when you're in work, it's all about work, right? No chitter chatter, occasional banter here or there, you know, over a cup of coffee is still understandable. But when it's work, I just put up a very serious, dull, dark face. Please teach and me <laughs> this. I'm the most chatty person so ever. It's, it's very, so hard to shut me it's up. It's very tempting. You have so many things you want to share. There's so many conversations you want to participate in. But I've realized the person understands that, look, she is a bubbly person. This is her personality trait but she does not bring this into work. So automatically you have shown that you have a professional boundary. It could be anybody and whatever said and done, when a project goes on for a year, you may not know the person at all, but you end leaving on a very different note. But if you've kept this in place on a personal checklist, what are the things that are okay with you? I thought it's my age, it's my time as a young entrepreneur to slog it out, right? You owe it to the company, you are free, you have no commitment, why not take that 9 p.m. call, finish it off, you can get done with your day and focus on this conversation. But I think, um, you know, we need to understand where we have to draw the line in a personal sense of it. Somebody told me very well that you spend so many hours of your day at work, this is who you are, this is your major part and this is your personality. So you have to be very mindful on who this person is because it, it's going to be kind of culminating into your coming years. So this process, I think with a professional checklist in place, your personal do's and don'ts of where you are going to do it. And um, the last thing being, uh, I think I need to learn this, nip it in the bud very early on, right? <laughs> Just because you're young does not mean you can't be assertive. It's very difficult. You don't want to come across as this rude, cranky person, especially when you're emotionally involved, even in how you want to portray yourself, the way you want to portray your project, your portfolio, your work. But I think it's okay to be assertive. And the same way if somebody did not be empathetic towards your problem, your time, your holidays, your mornings, um, it's okay, let them understand it. Uh, Zara, the same way you got a message, I in fact had it worse. I had the assistant call and give me a mouthful. So my client thought, again, on a corporate project that it's okay because, you know, as a woman, I don't want to kind of, you know, do this and I don't want my relationship to go sour. So I had an assistant call me from a landline and say, how can you not pick up his call? He's waiting for you on Zoom. My you God. log in, he will finish, he will come. And that's when I was like, listen, this isn't about me being younger. This is not about respect. In this relationship and this equation, we're both equals. I'm here to do my work. And I'm also here to be respected for who I am. So I think that is, is, is a little scary. It can be daunting, especially when you're younger. But I think you have to be confident in the fact that your work ethic is very strong. So this is not something that you're going to tolerate. Very motivating, Pearlie. When I got motivated hearing that. Apurva. Um, so I would say more than client, I think I would say as a young firm, you need to sit down and make a, be true to yourself and write down what kind of practice you want to be. Do you want to be a 50 person practice or do you want to be a boutique practice, right? And then you set down your goals for the next year, next five years, next 10 years based on what you want to make yourself, um, what you want to make your practice out to be. And um, every whatever, your go revisit what you have written down, right? That's really important. And then you take steps to achieve it. Um, being the boss 
doesn't mean uh, just the drawing board, right? It also means an Excel spreadsheet. So, uh, and, and again, you know, like they all said, I, I'm sucky at Excel. So it's okay to not be good at everything, right? So you hire them people who can cushion what you lack, right? So I think that's most important. And lastly, uh, like Paul said, just be confident. However young you are, don't let them walk over you. Just be confident, stray, stay, stay true to yourself and uh, they will all fall in line. Boite, some policy or something that you, you wish you had changed in your practice earlier on. I think from um, the early times what I've checked, uh, changed is I've made a checklist now. Uh, a checklist of uh, clients coming in. Uh, you take a history of what they do, uh, where are they coming from, who's given them your number. Even if they're coming from Instagram, uh, you just put their name on Facebook, you'll have common friends you can find out. Uh, that's my first checklist uh, from a lot of horrible experience. Uh, then the second thing which uh, it took time for me to discover is uh, rather than me wanting more work, it is the client needs to want me on the project. Okay. Only then uh, the relationship or the project is fruitful because as we are right now five people sitting here and all our design skills are very different and the client who would want her wouldn't want me or vice versa. So till the time you don't find it, it's okay to say no, take breaks, take sabbaticals, live your life. When it hits you, you will be excelling like way, way, way high in style and your time will come. But just don't go at uh, random moments for marriage proposal ever. <laughs> Learn from my mistake. I, I agree with that so much, Goite. I think you're so desperate for work when you're a young and starting out design studio. You keep thinking, I'll build my portfolio, I'll build my portfolio, I'll just do this, I'll just do this, I'll just do this. Before you know it, you're doing work that you're not proud of at all with people that you can't relate to at all. And you've gone in some other direction and then you're like, oh God, how do I even deal with this? And, and that's really, really valuable advice for sure. I hope I hope somewhere, even one of you, this this penny has dropped for you and, and, and somewhere you guys remember this conversation. Janet? Um, so for me, I think it's very important to emotionally connect the client. Uh, again, not, um, so I usually don't see the profile of the client first and then let, let myself get clouded with that. For example, what that client is worth, etc, etc. What he can do for me in the future. What's most important is having a conversation with them meeting them and also what I observe is how they treat other people. So for example, if you're meeting a client over a coffee or you go to a coffee shop or you're in that house, you see how they live, how they speak to people, etc. Like how you said, you need to be nice to not only your clients, but you need to be nice to your team, to your contractors, to your suppliers, to your laborers. So I had this client once who asked me that you don't shout at your uh, team, that you don't shout at your contractors, how can you get work done? And I said, no, I said, I don't do that. That's not my style. And uh, it was the same project. <laughs> Very bad experience. Yeah, he and actually said that. he was the supplier. You should have just fired him only. <laughs> exactly. And I was, I, I was like taken aback that you don't need to be rude to people to get things done. You don't need to shout at them to get things done. You just need to be a good person. That is so important. So, um, yeah, so I mean, uh, meeting them, understanding them. Uh, we also have a questionnaire in place. So when we start nice a project... questionnaire, I think seems yeah, to be like the big takeaway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a questionnaire, not only for uh, like the design, but also their requirements, what their timeline is, what their budget is, all of that. Uh, that is another thing that we've started doing recently. Uh, another thing I feel that's important uh, is that we should budget when we you know when we design, again we are designers, so we are not great at our numbers, maybe not great at Excel, etc. Uh, some projects are without budget also, that's what they say. So when they start a project, they'll be, no, 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 there's no budget, etc. And then when they select marble, they'll go for like a 2,000 square feet, per square feet, 5,000 per square feet and all of that. And then when the project is coming to an end and when you actually need to, you know, accentuate the space and accessorize it and do art and furniture and you're very excited because that's when the design comes in there's no budget left and you know the entire thing trickles so i feel that what we've started doing is now in our projects we tell them in the beginning that these loose items towards the end of the project or you know the mid cycle of the project please keep that 
aside and then we go ahead and we design so every time a client comes uh, already conveyed to them they approve that and then we do the civil work so i think That's it's amazing. nice to do that because otherwise what you're left with is a project which is not looking finished and then we are really like upset about that they are upset about it we had this one experience right now where a project ran out of budget and the clients were not aware but then they suddenly took on some property and some emis etc whatever you know they were like and they said that no now we don't have and then they spent so much on the civil carpentry and they have nothing for the end which i think made me really sad so that is something that i think you all should do awesome So guys, I think we've had some amazing takeaways from this session. Um, Pearl, I think my biggest takeaway from you is that it's never too late to draw the line. If you feel like you've gone down that slippery slope, you can wake up any day, hundred days from now, three years from now, if your project is still on, and just say no, it stops now. Like you can wake up at any point, even if a lot of stuff has already happened. It's never too late to wake up. I think for you, Apurva, it's to stay true to you and your design style and aesthetic. Uh, Boiti, I think you'll get many more marriage proposals after this talk, <laughs> and also the list and question. Eh? And I think for Janat, uh, something that I really resonate with is like the energy of the person has to resonate with the en energy of you. You know, when you're having those initial meetings, because you are who you are, and they are who they are. And if the two of you are not aligned, even just on a personal level, on an energy front, then that project will never be successful, irrespective of questionnaire, budget, timeline. anything because they don't get who you are and what your vibe is and then the project will never never go forward I'm just going to say you need to you need to get the vibe the like vibe we are yeah, like if that vibe is not like feeling it then you would just be better walking away and not showing desperation like Carl said in any way shape or form thank you guys so much what a fabulous thing thank you